we've been experimenting with this because there's a whole lot of song and a whole lot of message and, you know, timing. And we were, ha you know, we got done and with four minutes to spare for service. <laughs> so I get to mess with you. <laughs> See, it's one thing, you know that God's awesome. I know Stephanie Ann knows God's awesome. And I know you know God's awesome. And I know the choir knows God's awesome. And here's the deal. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, whether you're on a mountaintop experience or you're in the valley of despair, I want you to know that I know and we know that God is awesome. And no matter what you're facing, you're never alone. And it does not require you to be anything to have that awesomeness. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to be a certain way. That's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll catch myself third service. <laughs> All that awesomeness wants is for you to accept that awesomeness. So let's hear the chorus again. And when they say, my God is awesome, you might want to say, my God's awesome. Sing it with me. dears. So that's what we believe. We believe that there's something awesome that's greater than ourself and that awesomeness wants to express not only through us but around us and to us. This is what Ernest Holmes said though. When asked, you know, what's that stuff you're teaching, you know? Can you s say it in 50 words or less? How many of you have ever thought, I know I go to this place and I can't really explain it. It's kind of like unity but not really. Well, here's this. This is from the man. What we teach is a synthesis of the discoveries of science, the opinions of philosophy, the revelations of religions, but they must be applied to human needs and aspirations. So what that means for me is that ancient wisdom and modern wisdom should be able to help us have the life that we were born to live more succinctly we teach a technology that heals hurts and builds dreams. So now you know where you're at. And I'm really grateful that you joined us today, uh, not only here, but also online. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are new here and would like to, you could fill out a connection card because we do so much more than Sundays. We're just about a 24 seven spiritual center. So feel free to fill this out. It's in the seat backs in front of you if you're watching online there will be a connection card that you will be able to view on your screen. Plus, you can always fill one out at spiritualliving.org. We'd love to have you do that. Whew, that's what I want to say. And this is a great day, and there's a lot to do. There's a lot of song, a lot of singing, a lot of heart-opening opportunities because our head will always tell us what to look out for. Our heart will always say, let's go on anyway. So let's hear of our opening song. Oh, I'm standing at a crossroads And I don't know what to do Oh, I'm standing at a crossroads And I'm reaching out to you Still haunts my memory, and the future has no guarantee. How do I 
my next life, I want to be uh, Jonathan's backup singer, because I know all the words. I play it really loud in my car. I'm really good in my car with Jonathan singing. Ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Well, thank you for being here this morning, and um, if you have been in previous uh, Easter celebrations, you may be disappointed to know that this will not be about Jesus. <clears throat> that's Good Friday because that's that story. This is another story. It's a more ancient story. It's a really old story. Older than the Jesus story. In Assyria and Babylonian times, there was a goddess of fertility and sex and renewal and rebirth. And her name was, well, I'll spell it. It was I-S-H-T-A-R. But it was pronounced Esther. Sounds like estrogen, doesn't it? That's a hint. <laughs> Plus, her symbols were eggs and bunnies. Second hint. And in ancient times, people s took the springtime to celebrate new life, and they celebrated it again and again and again. And what I realized when I was doing this and really thinking about it is this is the perfect time to look to see if the dreams that we dreamed in the winter months when it was cold and dark, when we, had, when we stayed in more. And then when things changed and we knew that the sun was coming back, 
because it had reached as dark as it's going to get. And then we set intentions for the new year. This is the time when we start to see, are those intentions, are those ideas, are those dreams coming up? And most likely, we're seeing the shoots. That's what the ancient people would do. They used the times of the earth to remind them that they were part of the earth. And just as they saw the buds coming up in the fields, then they were looking at their own dreams and hopes and seeing if they were coming up or not and celebrating whatever was coming up. And this is really ancient wisdom. It's ancient wisdom that it's a never-ending story. That's the theme for this month. It's a never-ending story. It's been going on for a very long time, and it goes on in our own life. See, on Friday, we talked about disappointment, the need to please, betrayal, loneliness, rejection, and um, long-suffering. <laughs> it was a really cheery time. But we died to those behaviors, those patterns and those beliefs, so that we could rise up again in a new way. And this is the celebration of rising up. If we let that stuff go, then new stuff can happen. But here's the deal. We are such a fast food generation. And we sometimes don't understand that growth is incremental. We don't necessarily think a thing and there it shows up. It just, it just, it, you can't force it. I would, love, I would love it if I didn't have to go through a growth process so that I could create the kind of consciousness that would have the kind of life I want, but there's always a growth pro process. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about um, moving into a new house with Tim. We were starting a new life together. We lived on Magnolia, and there was no landscaping in the back, uh, in the backyard. I think you even gave us some plants, Garnet. And... There was nothing, and so we hired somebody to do the layout, and we bought the plants, what we could afford, which were like this. Big yard, little things over. And, and I would look at them, and they were, they were growing, but they weren't growing very fast. Not for my wants and needs. And every year, they'd grow a little bit more, but there was still all this sparse stuff. And I was told not to plant too much. <sighs> But it didn't flourish for years and years and years, about the year that we decided to move to Snohomish. <laughs> it looked really good. And then we had to start all over again. And that's kind of the way it is with our self-expression, expressing who we are, expressing what we're about. We, uh, um, we, need, to, we, we need to grow. Because every expression that we have, things are going to change. There's going to be a new season. And we just handled this expression just like I handled that yard. And then we're in a new expression. And we have to handle another thing. Jonathan was telling me that his son is graduating from college this year. This in May. And I was like, wow. I mean, what? 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 You know, I remember him going off to college. It's like pandemic happened. And I just got brain fuzz for two and a half years. And now he's graduating. Whoa. So Jonathan is going to had to go to from being an empty nester to a college student to now being the father of somebody who will make a lot more money than he does. <laughs> well, really, he's in math. And when what? No, 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 no. They make good money. An analyst? Are you kidding me? Get over it. Yeah, he's going to be buying new cars, and that'll be something new. Do you see how every time you go into a new phase, you've got to learn new things. You've got to bust through the fears of saying, I don't know how to do that. Or what would that be like? Or don't, don't ruffle my feathers. <laughs> That's a kind of a nature thing. You know, we have to uh, break through in our relationships because sometimes they are just what they were two years ago. And, and people have changed, but we haven't. See, it's a never-ending story. And it requires us breaking free from the constraints of our own ideas and self-talk. Now, there's, a, uh, there's no spirit, and I'm sorry, there's no spirit. There's always spirit. There's no spring without a breakthrough. There's no resurrection without a crucifixion or a death. And there's no breakthrough without something moving through something. See... If the seed doesn't die, the plant can't come up. It had to break open. And if the shell doesn't break, the chip doesn't ex will not break through either. Was, we, 
I, that song is perfect, and we have to let our heart lead us and give us courage to go, this is uncomfortable, but it's comfortable. How many of you have ever been there? It's uncomfortable, but it's knowable. And because it's knowable, it's comfortable. I mean, I got this figured out. I don't want to figure this out. But our soul, our heart, will always be leading us into new expressions. There's no, there's no expanded life expression if we stay safe within what we know about ourself and our God and the universe. If we don't have a new awareness of ourself, our God, and our universe, it won't be pretty. How many of you know some people that it's just not pretty? What if we, what if we broke through all that? And uh, we have a song about that. Dark as the night She could see into my soul Said she'd been watching Had some advice She said the shadows make you whole A life without pain Is wolf in sheep's clothes As if you listen to the lessons that it You'll find the gold Child, it's time to break the shell Life's gonna hurt, but it's meant to be felt You cannot touch the sky from inside yourself You cannot fly until you break the shell How grown folks seem so crazy Why are they so angry? Why are they so loud? And when I grow up, that's never, ever, ever gonna be me The moment that I decide That I won't build a wall Just shy of six feet tall Too big to fall shell. Life's gonna hurt, but it's meant to be felt. You cannot touch the sky from inside yourself. You cannot fly until you break the shell. Much disappointment to finally understand that there's no such thing as perfect. We're all simply doing the best that we can. We have choice to live free and truly be alive. This is your life, child. It's time to break the shell. Yourself. You cannot fly until you break a child in time to break the shell. Life's gonna hurt, but it's meant to be felt. You cannot touch the sky from inside yourself. You cannot fly until you. Do with these words.
words are what you will. It's time for us to be for real. You'll be stuck on the ground until you finally break the shell. So that's our lesson, but how do you do it? <laughs> I have advice from two Thomases. The first Thomas comes from the Apostle Thomas, and there is a gospel according to Thomas. It's in the, it was found in the Nag Hammadi Library, which was found in Egypt in the last century. And one of the verses, I mean, two of the verses in there says, it says it's written, when you bring forth that which is within you, that which is within you will save you. And then it goes on to say, if you don't bring forth what is within you, what you fail to bring forth will destroy you. Now, the saving is not from hell. The saving is from confusion, depression, avoidance, anxiety, fear, trepidation, and can I just stay stuck? which is kind of hellish. How many of you have ever been there? Doesn't it feel like, oh, I know, no, 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 no. Hell is a state of mind. That's what I believe. You don't have to believe that. You can believe in the other place if you like. And we're open. <laughs> I believe, and mystics have taught, that hell is a state of mind. You don't have to go anywhere if you're already in it. You know, I have enough hell. I don't, hot might be comfortable in the winter. Heaven is also a state of mind. It's one of peace and confidence and security and the ability to know that no matter what happens, I can handle it. It's a very heavenly experience. So what should we bring out? What will bring out that state of uh, confidence and peace and security and all is right in the world? What we bring out is our truth. Our truth. Because our heart will always speak to us of truth. And I'm going to share with you what my truth is and what I believe the truth. Not Everyone's going to have to have their own experience of truth. But I want to share a truth with you and you see if it fits. And if it does, then court it. Court it in your heart. Ask your heart, is that true? And the head's going to go, no, I've got proof. And the heart will, the heart speaks truly. So <laughs> the truth is, that perhaps needs to come out of us. And it's also written in the Bible that, that, in the Bible that Jesus said, it's not what you take into yourself that will save you, it's, what, you, it's what, you com what comes out of you that will save you. So it's how you speak, how you perceive things that are really going to make a difference in your life. So what is it that I might say is the truth? What can we be celebrating and being born within us now? And that's our inner, own inner conviction of our own goodness our uh, inner conviction of our own goodness. See, it's got to be an inner conviction of our own goodness because we live, move, and have our being in a society that says that we're flawed. But we can buy the right car or have the right dress or marry the right person or have the right perfume that will make us a little bit better. But the heart says, you're good. In fact, actually, beyond good, we are spiritually magnificent. Well, thank you. There's some amens, and there's some others like. <laughs> I had a friend uh, uh, that I grew up with in the ministry, and he said, we're always living out of our unhealed past, which we were singing about, or our spiritual magnificence. We're living out of our unhealed past or our spiritual magnificence. Now, for those of you that just have a little bit like, well, that might be a little bit much. You know, I like it better when they just, you know, like I'm okay. God thinks I'm okay. I'm okay. You're okay. God's okay. But there's kind of a line, and I don't know if I want to cross it and move over into magnificence. Well, the, there's proof everywhere. I was writing this down yesterday, and I thought, I don't know if they're going to go for magnificence. And I had these ravens that are attacking our suet feeder in the front yard. 
And they think they are magnificent. I mean, I was, in the, I was watching them. They think they're magnificent. And so do the little tiny um, wrens that live under the house. They think they're magnificent. My dog thinks it's magnificent. It's like magnificent. It thinks, yes, I will share the couch with you if you let me lay. You know, it's like, how many of you know these things? How many of you notice that one of the reasons that people thrive when they go out in, in nature is because nature thinks it's magnificent? How many of you go, you drive all the way to the ocean to look at it? What are you looking at? Oh, mediocre ocean. You don't drive two hours for mediocre ocean. You drive there for the magnificence of the waves and the smell and what's going on. And if it's a storm, it's even better. And if it's calm, it's great. You look at the mountains, you drive to Leavenworth, not for, you know, mediocre mountains. You go because they're magnificent. Nature is magnificent. Creation is magnificent. And we're not bystanders. We're part of it. And God created everything, and it says good and very good. Now, I could have, you know, paraphrased, magnificent. <laughs> You're magnificent. Now, check inside your heart. Let your heart speak. Your heart never says, well, maybe. You know what says, well, maybe is our head. Well, maybe. Well, but you know what I did yesterday? I actually didn't clean up the kitchen. And your heart goes, woo. It beats because you are magnificent. And it beats that message over and over and over again. Oh, you want to know, if you doubt it, how many of you own a cat? <laughs> the cat knows it is magnificent. It, doesn't it tell you all the time? Now, do you really think you are lower than a cat? You're at least on par. <laughs> so if a cat's magnificent, so are you. So are you. <laughs> So I want to share with you now the second, Tom, the second Thomas that I want to quote. And this is Judge Thomas Troward, who was one of the major influences of Ernest Holmes. And he wrote this to himself. So I'm going to share it with you because he uses the first person. But I'd love for you to just think about it this way. What he said is, my mind is a center of the divine operation. And then I'm going to put little paraphrases in here. He's saying, I don't know if I could do a deep British judge voice. My mind is the center of divine operation. And then I'd say, of magnificence. And the divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before. Something entirely new, not included in past experience, but it proceeding out of it in an orderly sequence of growth. Let me give you two examples. See, just as as the trees are always putting out new, new branches, but they come from the old branches. They're not, they are in a new expression of this past life. And if you'll notice it, people are doing this all the time. I have a, a friend who, who had a miracle baby. Prayed, wanted it, prayed, and I, you know, it's like, okay, a, a mir baby. But out of that, she now gets to experience single mother. New expression proceeding out of the old. A new development. And she's having to break through and learn all new things. All new things. You know, some people that want, say they want a significant other, I believe there's a part of them that says, but I'd have to learn to be a couple. Huh. Mm. Single's not so bad. <laughs> Another woman started a company all by herself, made the product all by herself, marketed it all by herself, got her husband involved, making it, marketing it, marketing, marketing it, but it got so big and so famous and so out there that they're now having to hire people, which is a whole new learning experience. She'd rather make and market, not direct. But see, you see how the growth came out of what she did 
and it just continues. It will continue for all of us. But in, at any time, we can say, no, I don't want this. And, and actually, did you hear my voice go up? Whiny. I don't want this. Why? I prayed to be successful. Nee. How many of you have ever had your prayers answered and then went, Mew. <sighs> See, this is a call for life. Life calls us to move forward and to break through the resistance to the new life, and then there'll be new life, and there'll be new life, and there'll be new life, more expressions of that magnificence. Then he goes on to say, therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world of which I am a center, it will move forward to produce new conditions always in advance of any that have gone before. And just to um, just support that a little bit, when he says that, you know, consequence of my own special world, Meister Eckhart said, God is that which is centered everywhere, but circumference is nowhere. So it does find a center in us. And if we are willing to be flexible, if we're willing to say yes, if we're willing to give up the idea that something's out there and it may be paying attention, but it finds a place of expression through us and its expression wants to be magnificent, we will go from glory to glory, from glory to glory to glory, from good to gooder. I'll rephrase that, from good to gooder. Now, a lot of my work with people is to um, inspire them to know and find that center. And that center will direct us. We don't, we don't need a lot of other outside influences if we find that center and we listen to it and we let it lead us. And then we'll start having growth spurts. <laughs> and then we'll rest up and we'll enjoy and then we'll have another growth spurt. And then we'll have another growth spurt and we'll rise up out of our confined thinking over and over and over again. And when it's not constant, we get to rest. We get to, it's like we plant things. And once I planted them, the growth was inevitable. Once you plant an idea and you honestly believe that the magnificence of God wants to express through you and through everyone around you, it will be inevitable. There will be growth. And we get to sit back and watch in our own time. But you know what? Spiritual people, like a lot of people, can be impatient. How many of you know someone? They didn't come this morning, I'm sure. <laughs> but they're impatient. I get impatient. I want it now. I want it now not only for myself, although I love my life, but I want it for our world. I'm impatient with uh, prejudice. I'm impatient with racism. I'm impatient with, with women still making so much less than a man in the same job. Sorry. I'm, I'm impatient with, with, with our inability to live beyond war. I'm impatient. But I know the seeds have been planted, and they're being planted within people, and the more they're implanted with those people, the more things will shift. They have to. Because trickle-down never works, except when it's coming from spirit. Life changes through trickle-up. Enough people change, things change. Enough thing, and the more we hold that, since we're all one, and then we, when we hold that there is a plan for a goodness that has to be breaking out and breaking through the old paradigms, the more we hold that, it will happen. It has to. So think about that, and uh, that's what spring's all about. I had an idea while the crier is coming up here, I had an idea about how Sunday brunches might go from now on. Wouldn't it be kind of fun if you asked the, your fellow brunchers, so since last spring, how have you grown? And what new shoots of expression are you experiencing? And what old belief have you broken through? And what new colors are you experiencing in your life? And, you know, if you have a mimosa before you have that conversation, I'm sure it will be very fluid. <laughs> and people will speak deeply from their heart. <laughs> mimosa and memories, that's what we could call Easter brunch from now on. Here's a song for you. Sex 
is obscene We got it twisted In this lucid dream Baptized in boundaries Schooled in sin Divided by difference Sexuality and sin Oh, so we can hate each other Fear each other, we can build these walls between each other, blow by blow, brick by brick, keep yourself locked in, yourself locked. Yeah, we can hate each other, fear each other, we can build these walls between each other, blow by blow, brick by brick, keep yourself locked in, yourself locked. said, what good is it if Jesus were born 1,300 years ago, if that presence, that Christ is not born within me? So what I would say, just to shift that a bit is, what matters it if someone rose up out of their confining tomb of disbelief 
2,000 years ago, if that same Christ does not rise up in us and do, does not lift us up into an awareness of who we are so that we not only rise up for ourselves, but we lift up others. So you might want to sing the chorus one more time. the singers. Could you go that high one more time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, so who is our usher this, this serve? Thank you. Jeffrey, if you'll bring the basket forward, that'd be great. And uh, I have a few things to announce. I will be offering you an opportunity to um, contribute to this ministry. But right now, I have a few things I'd love to share with you. First of all, we have a class that starts tomorrow. It's called Steps to Freedom. Because it's one thing to say I'm free, and there's these steps that you can make to have that experience. And uh, it, will, it goes from 6.30 to 9. It's a Zoom class, so you can take it from anywhere. So think about that. More information about that at the registration table in the lobby. Also, you can get more information about the Global Path to Membership. If this seems like the kind of place that you want to support and you'd like to be a part of it, because it is our members that create the, the consciousness, the, the vibration of this place. So yeah, there's a message, but there's a consciousness and vibration. And people are still just trickling back. And they'll come in and go, wow, it's different here. You know, it's not the same as on my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I love you. I love you anyway, all of you in your jammies. Or watching much later, it doesn't matter. But there's something about this vibration that's created by our members. So if you feel like that is good for you, then um, please notice that it said Global Path to Membership because we are now finding ways for people to be involved from all over the world because we now have people way outside these boundaries becoming members. So think about that. And we also have CBEC, an all-community camp, yes. And... <laughs> Those people are clapping are those who have gone there. And, and, and other people like, church camp. No, it's not your grandfather's church camp, honest. It's, people go over and over and over again because it's really a marvelous, marvelous experience. Who's gone more than once? Yeah, just ask them. They, it's really a marvelous experience. More information about that also at the, in the registration table in the lobby. Those are all the things that I need to say, and Jeffrey's brought up uh, a basket. We used to pass a basket, but now we've got all sorts of COVID protocols. So what we do is we make this a ritual, and if you have a gift, you can bring it up and put it in the basket, or you can just come and bless the basket, bless this community, because your blessing, your gift, all of it is accepted and wonderful and valued, and we, we love you. So thank you for your contribution. And uh, they have a song. Thank you, God, for everything. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes, everything. Every person here, every person online. And I would like to invite you to join Ev, who is doing double duty as singing and praying, to join her and me in the prayer circle right over here after service. And those of you online, there's a button you can push, and there's practitioners waiting to pray with you. If you're ready to move into greater good, don't let your good get in the way of your better. Pray with us. Know your magnificence. Know your magnificence. And as we join together, we can heal the world. We can lift up in love as we go about our lives. This isn't just Easter. This isn't just Sunday. This is the magnificence of God expressing as beautiful you and me. And so it is. So it is. I'm going to invite Sarah and Lauren to come up and sing our closing song with us. And I would invite you to stand as you are able to rise up, oh my soul. I know you know this. <laughs> 